and 96% of the population in the U.S. are deficient in iodine, and the world may be 72%. Adequate iodine is very important for treating, I'm going to say we're treating, and preventing certain cancers. What are those certain cancers? Well, cancer of thyroid is one. Breast cancer is another. Cancer of the breast, cancer of the uterus, cancer of the endometrium, cancer of the ovary, cancer of the prostate are big players in this story. Now, another area that's important is fibrocystic breast disease, uh, which is very, very high in American women, uh, and that uh, creates a swelling and tenderness of the breast, and it's also a precancer situation, and it's rampant, because Fibrocystic breast disease is very much related to insufficient iodine. Aha! Uh -huh. In the same spectrum. And I, I can't say I'm seeing it 100%, but maybe two thirds of the women I see you know, have fibrocystic breast disease. And this is treatable, and iodine is part of that. So let's take us to another understanding. The most concentrated organ of iodine is the thyroid. The second highest is the ovaries. Okay, and so we get, we get ovarian cancer, ovarian cysts, we're really low in iodine. And then iodine is, is, is really in almost all the organs, the salivary organs, the adrenal glands, insufficient iodine in the adrenals causes adrenal weakening. Literally almost every organ system in the body, that's what we're talking about. And it is clear that low iodine is also associated with increased insulin resistance and diabetes. But iodine is the most powerful uh, killer of bacteria, viruses, um, fungi, and parasites. There is. We're seeing a much bigger picture when we talk about iodine deficiency. Also, adrenal function, ovarian function. Now, what I say ovarian, how about estrogen? The research shows that when people have adequate iodine, the three estrogens are put into balance. And estriol, which is the anti-cancer one, it goes into more predominance, uh, and uh, the whole breast cyst and estrogen dominance is put back into balance, which is good, obviously, for women as well as men. So that's another role that iodine plays. It rebalances the hormonal systems. Now, obviously, iodine makes the thyroid work too. But iodine is very, very important for brain function. How important is it? About uh, one third of the whole human population lives in iodine deficient soils. That's a problem. And what we see throughout the world is rates of uh, cretinism and low brain function, hyperactivity, uh, ADD, they're all associated with low, uh, and mental retardation, they're also associated with low neonatal iodine. Low iodine is associated with a variety of mental problems, you know, anxiety, depression, poor memory function. Literally low iodine is associated with a slower metabolism in the brain and a, a decreased uh, blood circulation to the brain. So when you have adequate, sustainable iodine, which is for the whole system, you're going to get better brain circulation and better brain function. And if you don't, you have a slowing of consciousness, a slowing of mental ability. This is really important. So I'm observing that people who get adequate iodine, not the minimum to prevent you from being a cretin, that's a very low standard, okay? That's your 400 micrograms. You're not going to get a goyer and be a cretin. They're great, you know? How about being smart and capable and having your endocrine system working well, your immune system working well, the protection against you know, most of the cancers, and having a full load of energy going on? in your system because you have adequate ATP. 
to make adequate ATP, you have to have appropriate thyroid hormone on, uh, on your mitochondria, and you need iodine to do that. 